You, you may already be familiar with all the standard reports when you click on the reports menu. Okay. And then you click on co company and financial, another set of very commonly used reports. And you're going to see all the common reports like profit and loss standard, the balance sheet, okay, and the statement of cash flows. This is, for the most part, what, uh, what people look at in terms of what they call standard financial reports. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and pull that uh, profit and loss standard. We'll get started with that, and we'll have that report uh, up in the screen. What I'm going to do is to have a little bit more real estate. I'm going to go ahead and uh, collapse this left navigation bar. So I'm going to collapse that to the left. And I'm also going to click on the window menu and see if I have anything else open. Notice that the home screen is open as well. So I'm going to switch over to the home screen and close that. I find that when I'm teaching QuickBooks, it's best to uh, close anything that's not relevant to what we're teaching. That way, if something gets maximized or minimized by mistake, you're only looking at the one thing that I'm trying to uh, teach at the moment. So we have our, our profit and loss. It, it's up. And I'm, in full disclosure, I'm working on QuickBooks uh, Desktop 2019. But if you're working with QuickBooks Desktop 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 through 19, so any versions of 13 to 19 should look extremely similar, if not identical. Okay. So we're looking at the profit and loss. And the first component that we want to look at is the date range. So right here on the left side of the screen, top left, it tells me what date range is being displayed in the profit and loss. You also see it on the title up here. So if I click on dates and I click on the drop down menu, I can actually click on all, right? This is kind of the default option. If I click on all, it will show me every single transaction since the beginning of time, which could be 10 years, five years, three years, however big this QuickBooks file is. We generally don't look at transactions in this all category especially when we look at a profit and loss. Generally, when we look at a profit and loss, we look at it by month or by year. Typically, when we're talking about uh, paying taxes or planning for income taxes, the typical thing is to look at the entire fiscal year. So what we do is we go to dates and we either pick a fiscal year, okay? So that's one of, one of the common choices. Or uh, if, you, if our fiscal year is different than our calendar year, then we do uh, the option that says, this year, which uh, which is that's this fiscal year, and then we have. Uh, me, hold on a second. Let me just uh, zoom in here for a second. Sorry. So we have this fiscal year, and we have this fiscal year to date. Those are the two I wanted to show you. So we got this fiscal year and this fiscal year to date. So when we look at this fiscal year, it's going to look at January through December, right, of the entire current fiscal year. If we choose this fiscal year to date, which is actually a more common choice. It will be from the beginning of the fiscal year through today's date. Now, one thing uh, to keep in mind for this entire webinar, uh, on the QuickBooks desktop side, we're working on the premise that today's date is December 15, 2022. So again, today's date is December 15, 2022. If you're watching this live, obviously, that's not today's date. And if you're watching this recording, it has to be many years into the future until you're actually close to that date. So that is today's date for the purposes of this uh, webinar because we're working on a sample file. So we pick this fiscal year to date, and that's going to give me January through December 15, uh, 2022, which is today's date. Then we're going to click on where it says show columns, and we're going to do one of the most common customizations is to look at the financial statement by month. So we're going to look at the entire year up to to date, broken down by month. So we're going to click on that, click on month, and then all of a sudden we have um, a report that shows us a trend, that shows us what's going on throughout the entire year. Now, one of the challenging things about this is the amount of sub accounts. So if you look at up here, you see that there's a parent account, okay? And then there are sub accounts. Now, sub accounts are nice because you do get uh, a total for the parent account, and then you get a bunch of subtotals for the sub accounts. The problem is when you get to this level where you're looking at 12 months worth of information and you're trying to print it, for example, which is a common application, when we try to print it, what ends up happening is the report now takes multiple pages, right? Look, it's 10, 10 pages to print this report. So that becomes a problem because all of a sudden it's not readable or useful anymore. Now, there are some tricks that we can do is we can fit 
uh, the report to one page wide and we can fit it to one page high. That's optional. So once we do that and then maybe we can switch it to landscape and then we're going to get a little bit more uh, visibility, but you're going to notice that the report's a little bit hard to read. So ch check that out. That's, that's still kind of hard to read. The text is uh, really small. So one of the things that we do, especially when the, there's so much information being shown on the screen, is we want to get rid of all those uh, sub accounts and only show the parent accounts. In other words, I only want to see this account and I don't want to see any of these accounts and I just want to see the total. So up here, there's a button that says collapse. Okay. Once you click on collapse, all the sub accounts uh, hide. Okay. So now we're getting a little bit better. Now it looks like it's a little bit uh, easier to read. A couple of things that you also want to do when you're considering um, displaying so much information in a single report is you want to sort them. Right. So you want to click where it says sort by and you want to uh, possibly show the biggest number uh, in the top. Now, not every time it needs to be sorted. Some people like alphabetical order, which is actually the default setting. If you see here, A, B, I, P, R, T, U, this is alphabetical order. Okay, that's usually not very useful. So we're gonna change that to uh, total, and then we're gonna click on the little A through Z sort button so we can make it into descending order. So once I click on that A through Z button um, and make it descending order, now it's gonna have the bigger number in the top. So notice I got a big number, and then the numbers get progressively smaller as we go down. So it's no longer alphabetically ordered, now it's uh, based on descending order. So to take this one step further, uh, notice that there's some spacing between the months, some spacing between the months, between the columns. So I can actually limit that spacing if I want those numbers to be a little bit tighter. So that's possible too. And what we do is we actually put our cursor right in between the two and it's, it's going to turn into a cross. And then we're going to click and drag. Notice that there's a line there. We're going to click and drag to the left. So we're going to make that column a little bit tighter. Uh, and then we're going to hit yes here. So it's, gonna, it's telling me right here, hey, are you sure you want to resize all the columns? That's right. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to hit yes. And notice that it, the columns become a little bit tighter. There, there, there will be a point in which it'll, they'll be very difficult to read. That's true. So you're going you're gonna to have to uh, play with it until you get the correct uh, width. So now I'm going to attempt to print this. Um, I hit control P on the keyboard to go straight into the print screen. And I'm going to leave this in landscape. And I'm also going to fit both into one page wide versus one page high, click on preview. And now all of a sudden I got a functional report I can print with all 12 months, something I can sit down and review with a business owner, with a manager, with a CEO, uh, you know, whoever is in charge um, and to look at these numbers. And then now we have more point of analysis. Yes, we, we did lose some details with the sub accounts, but if you want to print into one page, that may be part of the strategy. So let me go ahead and close that and, and close that. And I'm going to go back and do something a bit more fundamental. So I'm going to take away uh, show columns by month. I'm going to take that away and put it back into uh, total only, which is basically going to show me the whole year. So I'm going to do that, switch back to total only. And then I'm going to show you uh, how to expand and collapse the sub accounts manually one by one. And this is pretty intuitive. So you're going to notice that next to each account, there's a little triangle, okay? If you're working with uh, QuickBooks 2016 and up, you get this new color gradings where the sub accounts are grayish and the, the ones that don't have a sub accounts are, are white. So you notice there's a little slight color differentiation between it. That's just letting you know that that um, that whole area is clickable and expandable. So before you used to be able to only be able to click on that little triangle. So if you're working on 20. 13 to, to 15, you have to click on the actual triangle to expand and collapse. But once we got to version 2016, we can click anywhere, pretty much anywhere in that gray area. Um, so we can click anywhere in that gray area. So anywhere in the entire box, we can double click to expand and collapse. So if I want to, um, in this case, if I want to double click on automobile, I, I double click anywhere in the gray space and then double click again, um, it collapses the 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 account. So I can manually choose what I want to expand and collapse based on uh, what I want to see. Uh, the other really important things about this is uh, the collapsing the category. So we can ch check this out. We can actually collapse uh, the entire income group so no accounts actually show. So when you collapse the entire income group, 
no collab, no account show, uh, and it just shows me the entire category. So I got income, I got uh, cost of goods sold, and I collapsed uh, expense. So, so uh, we were on, we were discussing um, how we can expand and collapse uh, the major categories uh, themselves and not see any of the sub accounts, which in this case uh, you're seeing them. That is uh, optional, right? So you can expand and collapse these um, as you go. So now let's say, for example, that we, um, that we customize this report in a very specific way. Um, you know, we did the sorting, we, we collapsed the accounts, whatever it happens to be. And let's say, for example, we want to show this by quarter. So I'm going to show you a different uh, flavor of this. I'm going to show you this by quarter. And then you get to the point that you say, you know what, this report is perfect for me. I, I don't want to be clicking on 10 different places to pull this report into the future. This is a report that I want to uh, pull in real time anytime I need it. So once you're done customizing that report, um, one of the things I like to do, I, I strongly suggest, is that anytime you customize a report in any way, that you want to give it a title uh, that, that will remind you what you were thinking when you were putting that report together. So I'm going to expand these columns a little bit just so I can read everything that's up there since I'm doing it by quarter anyway. I don't need it to be as tight. And then I'm going to click on Customize Report. So top left, I'm going to click on Customize Report. And I'm going to go to where it says header and footer. So that allows me to change the title in the top. And um, the first line is the company name. I usually don't change that. But the report title I do, that's really important to change. So I'm going to call this profit and loss uh, year to date. So I do YTD, right? That's just short for year to date. And then I do by quarter in this case. Okay, I can do QTR if I want to um, make that short. So I can do by quarter and then I can put uh, descending or something like that, right? So uh, assuming that I want to, um, you know, explicitly say that I, it, this is in descending order, okay? Um, and then in the in the footer line, I can do something like right here, I can put something like on audited for internal review or something like that. You actually get 100 characters in this line if, in case you're wondering how much stuff you can put here. So you got a footer. Um, I got my new title. You know, there are some layout options here, like uh, putting things in the you know right side, center. Uh, on I just leave it on standard. Like to me, that's that's good enough. I don't really need to mess with that part. And then I'll click on OK, and that would be uh, my name customization and my footer, which you can see on the report, but you can see it once you print it. So if you actually go try to print. I want you to see that there's uh, there's my footer, and that is just very important because, in my experience, when you when you customize reports and you print them and you pass them around the office, if there's no context behind what was in the report, what were you trying to achieve, why you customized it a certain way, um, it can skew the other person's perception of what is it that they're looking at. Anyway, so we're gonna save this report by clicking on Memorize, and essentially what Memorize does is allows me to pull the report in the future literally with a single click. So I'm going to click on Memorize. It's telling me what should I call my Memorize reports. It's automatically going to re read the name from the report title. I can put it into a uh, into one of the buckets here, and we'll discuss that in a second. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it uh, in no group. Okay, we'll talk about Memorize groups in a second. So I'm going to leave it outside of a group, and then I'll hit OK. And then that's saved, and you should get a little camera picture sound at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and uh, hit escape. So I close that report. So I don't have the report anymore. It's gone. Imagine it's the next day, and I want to see the report. So I'm going to click on the reports menu on the top. Then I'm going to click on memorize reports. And then I'm going to go down to the report I just created, which is the profit and loss by quarter descending order. So I just simply just go to that and click on that and that will pull up uh, the report. Now another really interesting thing uh, you can do um, here in the, in, the, in the view menu, uh, there's this hidden option, a lot of people don't know about this, that, that you can actually add anything you're looking on the screen into the icon bar. So I have to describe what the icon bar is in a second, but I can also click on uh, add uh, profit and loss report to the icon bar, and I'll hit OK here. And what that means is here on the, on the left navigation bar, all the way in the bottom, right, 
it's an icon there for quick access. Now, like most people won't know to scroll all the way down to get there, right? So what you can do, assuming this is a very important report that you're looking at all the time, you can click on customize shortcuts and we can actually take that report and we can push it all the way up by, and it's kind of tricky. You have to click on that little diamond there and you have to drag up. So if I click on that and drag all the way up, put it in the in the first very first thing and I can shorten it here so I can just call it uh, PNL by uh, let me just make that all caps let's do PNL PNL by quarter something like that right so I'm just making it uh, very easy to read right so I, I I'm not changing the name of the report itself I'm changing the label of the icon for quick access so once I click OK uh, you look at that left navigation bar, notice that it has it right there and then. So if you are always looking at one set of reports all the time and it's really important for your business to be looking at that report, that's what you want to do uh, immediately, okay? Um, so you want to um, have it there, okay? So uh, the other uh, option that you have, and this is kind of an interesting trick, what you can do is if you want this report to pop up every single time, you open QuickBooks, go to the window, make sure that no other windows are open so that we only have this report uh, set up right now. And then we're gonna go into the edit menu. Okay, we're gonna click on edit and we're gonna go to preferences. Okay, so we'll click on preferences and we're gonna go into desktop. And this is kinda like, I call this a Jedi trick. Like a lot of people just don't know about this stuff. So go to desktop and then you're gonna uh, uncheck show homepage. You're gonna uncheck that, get rid of that and then you're going to click on Save Desktop. And essentially what you do by doing this is you're telling QuickBooks, listen, every single time I open QuickBooks, I want it to look like this, right? So if there's one master main report that you want the QuickBooks user to see every single time, um, that, um, that, uh, that, uh, uh, th that will happen. Now, one important thing about it, and this is, just, this is a, sort of a bug in the system, if I expand one of the accounts, let's say I expand one of them, I'm gonna expand payroll by itself. And I memorize the report. I'm gonna click on replace. And uh, I go back, I go back here and re re run the report again. The, the, the state of collapse and expand, so the state of collapse and expand does not uh, memorize. So unfortunately, if you individually memorize or collapse any specific uh, accounts, once you pull the memorize report, that does not uh, come back. That's just how it is. If I do, ex if I exp expand the whole thing, right? If I do expand the whole thing and I memorize that, and I'm gonna go back and pull the report again, that will show up. So the fully expanded or fully collapse mode saves, but the individual accounts that collapse and expand do not. So apologize for that, but I, <laughs> that's the software. And those are the flaws uh, behind the software. Okay, so we talked about um, the profit and loss by month, and we kind of did a whole bunch of customization around that. Let's talk about now about uh, profit and loss by class or by customer. So let, I'm going to pull the profit and loss again. Go to profit and loss standard, and uh, I'm going to do it by 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 uh, for the whole year. So let's do it for the whole year again, how we were doing it before. And then here where it says total only, there's two really interesting options here. One is by customer or job, and the other one is by class. And these are the two most typical uh, ways to customize a profit and loss because a lot of business want to track the profitability by cost center or by project. So let's start with the easy one, which is profit and loss by class. Okay, so we're gonna select a class there in the drop down option. Okay, and now we have our profit and loss that contains all of the income components that were categorized under new construction and all the income components that were categorized under remodel. Now, how that, does that information come about? Well, let me uh, double click on one of these and show you. So if you look at any transaction uh, in QuickBooks, almost all, almost all the transactions will have a field for class for some strange reason, some don't in some places. But if you look up here, here it says class. So that invoice is gonna be automatically assigned to the construction class because that's the only uh, field that's being selected with class and that field affects the entire invoice. So those these sales here of uh, 2,000 
dollars, right? One thousand ninety nine, whatever it happens to be, that's gonna be assigned to the new construction class. So when I, when I look at my profit and loss by class, part of the dollar amounts being reported to that class is because that class is selected there. So that's pretty simple stuff. Now there is a class here called overhead, which um, apparently the in this sample file no invoices are being sent to overhead, but some of the expenses are. As you can see here, we have some expenses being sent to overhead. As a matter of fact, it looks like the way that these people use this QuickBooks file is all invoices are being classed and all expenses are being sent to the overhead class. So you're gonna have to deal with the fact that your profitability by class is actually wrong. Let me hit a, I wanna hit collapse real quick, just uh, so we have less information. So my, my profitability by class is wrong because according to this, one, this class has $78,000 of profits, this one has 191, and this, this one has negative 156. So in theory, if you really wanted to know your profitability by class, you have to take this number and um, either split it by the two classes or do some sort of uh, percentage allocation. That's kind of a, a tricky thing um, for that. I do have a video in YouTube, and if you email me, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you, where I explain like a really sort of high-end trick and how, to, how I do certain journal entries to move things uh, from an overhead class into an allocated class. It's kind of a complex topic, would not be covered today. The other piece I, I wanted to tell you about is uh, this unclassified class. This is actually not a class. This is when we uh, send the category to unclassified. So if I were to write a check, I'm just gonna write a check here at random. I'll pick a vendor here and we'll make this uh, $500. And I'm going to go ahead and neglect to put a class. So I'm going to forget to put a class here. That's what I'm doing. I'm neglecting to put a class here. And I'm also neglecting to put a class here. That we're, going to, we're going to talk about source and, and, and destination in a second to explain why there, there are two class fields. But in a nutshell, to try to explain this as quick as possible, this is called the source class. And then this one will be called uh, the split or the detail class. And the one that matters for the profit and loss report is this one. And I'm telling you, this piece of information, if it's new to you, that may be worth it the entire webinar because most people get hung up on the difference between source and destination. So this is the class that matters for the PL, and this is the class up here that matters for the balance sheet. And that, that may be the simple way to explain it. So I'm gonna select here and I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna select any class, I'm actually gonna leave it blank. And then I'm gonna click on save and close. And I want you to notice what happens is that there is now a transaction that is sitting there in my unclassified. Okay, that's a big, big issue, uh, big, big problem because this is not a class. This means that we left out the class or the lack of a class. So that should be under overhead, or, or, or better yet, it should go into one of the specific classes. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, um, a, a profit and loss by class. You could also um, just filter it. So if I wanted to just show uh, new construction, I don't, I don't wanna see any of this junk, we're gonna click on the customize report button on the left, left top left, and we're gonna click on filters, okay? So we clicked on filters, and then we're gonna go down and look for the class uh, filter. So we're gonna go down, select class, there it is, select the class, and then just pick the specific class that I want to see. So in this case, I wanna see uh, the new construction class. So I'm gonna select new construction, and then I hit okay, and then I'm only seeing the new construction class. I can do multiple selections to that filter, so I'll click on customize report again, and then I'm gonna go to filter again, and then I'm gonna click the class on the right side here, because these are already selected filters, or active filters would probably be the best way to describe those. So click on that, click on the drop down menu, and then select uh, multiple classes, okay? So we're gonna select multiple classes, and we're gonna select, let's say, new construction remodel, and we'll leave uh, overhead out of the equation, okay? And then we'll hit okay, and then okay. Now the neat thing about selecting the, the specific classes is that it leaves unclassified out. You actually can't include unclassified as one of your choices. Let me go back to this filter again to show you. Because if you notice on this option, you don't have unclassified as an option here. So the minute you select two specific classes or one, unclassified comes out. Even if I click on select all and I hit okay and okay, unclassified will be out of the equation. So I have to actually remove 
the class filter altogether. I got to get rid of it, remove it, if I actually want to see unclassified. Then I hit OK. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to only see unclassified in a profit and loss. That is just an unfortunate thing. Um, I, I, I mean, I've never tried it. I, I could, we could play around with it and see if we can get something by selecting none of them, hitting OK. I doubt that that will work. It doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's, there's just no way to get um, unclassified in there. Uh, one of the things you can also do is you can click with the, with the right uh, mouse button anywhere in the report. And then this um, pop-up comes up, which, is, uh, which allows you to change uh, font size, uh, allows you to do a couple of things. And really, it depends on where you click. So if I click, click in the content somewhere, uh, this will say, you have to pay attention to this, this says report data, right? But if I right-click in a blank space, this will say uh, row labels, right? And if I right-click on the, on the title, it will say company name. So depending on where you right click, you will have the formatting uh, show up. So if I right click somewhere in the data, okay, and then I change the font, I'm gonna make this Arial rounded and make it 12 and hit okay. And when I click, uh, actually, hold on, give me a second. I'm gonna run the PNL again because I actually clicked on that way too fast. So um, again, I'm gonna right click in the data itself, in inside the data. Okay, we, I'm gonna right click on a number. Notice that here it says report data, so I'm only changing the report data. I'm gonna make that 12 and then hit okay. Then I get a box that says, do you wanna change all the related funds? And then I can hit no, and then it only will change the funds of the area that I right click on. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So if I, I wanna now right click on the, on the accounts themselves, and then I wanna make this, for example, black oblique, and I'll make this 14, and then I'll also make this blue, and then I hit okay. And again, I get the same box. If I don't wanna change the entire report, I hit no. Okay, so I hit no, and then that, we'll, we'll do that. If I right click anywhere else, and I change this to, let's say, Arial, and bold, and 12, and I'm gonna make this, uh, let's make this maroon, and I hit okay. And then it asks me, do you wanna change all the fonts? If I hit yes, it would actually reformat almost every um, every area of the report that touches that uh, that area. So uh, that's one way to do formatting. Uh, when you click on customize report, you can uh, click on funds and numbers here. So right here, funds and numbers, and you can do a couple of things when it comes to formatting. You can make negatives parentheses. You can make negatives red. You can divide everything by zero. You can also get rid of cents. So those are all the things that you can that you can do, and hit OK, and that could, that would effectively change a lot of what your report uh, looks like. Uh, some other folks, uh, when they say I want to custom formatting, they talk about exporting it to Excel, right? So that's another option. You can click on Excel and click on Create a New Worksheet. Okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to now uh, create a report in Excel, right? And it gives you a couple of options. It says, do you want to update an existing worksheet? So that's if I already exported and changed the formatting. Do I want to update the data or do I want to just create a new one? So I'm just going to leave it on create a new one. Before I hit um, uh, export, I'm going to click on advanced here to show you what options are here. So here you're going to have a couple of things, which is, hey, do I want to bring the format and the fonts from QuickBooks into Excel. And that would be up to me if I want that. Maybe I would just want Excel to have plain text and I want to modify the, you know, whether it's bold or the color and that sort of thing. Then we have a couple other things that we have, a couple of choices. Do you want to do out of fit, which automatically organizes the columns for you? Do you want to click create freeze frames in the top, show guidelines? Typically, if you want it at the simplest, rawest format, you would uncheck everything in here. And the only thing I leave open is uh, show grid lines. So if I export it like this, you're gonna get uh, the simplest version of that export uh, into Excel, right? Without a lot of bells and whistles, it should probably be technically, it's a little bit faster on the construction of the report process. Um, and then in here, you can do your own custom formatting per se, which you can make any of these things uh, bold or change uh, the formatting on this. And you can do that all in Excel. Um, after after the fact. So I, I want to move on to um, balance sheet customization as well. 
And um, and and I, I'm gonna quickly before I do that, I'm gonna talk about uh, the profit and loss by class. Uh, I mean, profit and loss by customer, because that's that kind of is an important one. So let me uh, close this and do a, another profit and loss here from scratch. And I'm gonna do uh, this fiscal year. And I'm gonna do show columns. And instead of doing class, I'm gonna do customer job. Now this gets a little hairy, and I'm gonna explain why. Um, when you do a cost, when you do a profit loss by customer job, and I'm gonna try to collapse uh, the accounts to make this report a little bit less convoluted, um, and I'm also gonna try to make this uh, customer jobs as tight as possible, as I showed you earlier. We can make these uh, columns uh, smaller. And um, while this uh, resizes, a couple of things. So notice that we have, if I scroll all the way to the left here, notice that we have uh, essentially three jobs. So we have a customer called Albert Crumby Christie, and she's got three jobs, remodel bathroom, kitchen, and family room. So essentially, QuickBooks will give me a, a full profit and loss by customer, by job, and unfortunately, I cannot do a, what's called a horizontal collapse. So I can't show a summary of just the customer and omit the job. So the minute you have jobs, those are gonna show as columns. So you have to think about that. Generally, when we do a profit and loss by customer, we filter it and only show one particular customer, so two particular customers. So when we go to a customized report in the top left, following the same sort of a sequence of events that we've been, uh, that we've been following, we are gonna um, run, uh, run the filter and only show a specific group of customers. So I'm gonna go to filters and then go down to uh, name. So that's another tricky one. People look for the word customer and it's not customer, it's name. And then we're gonna click on the drop down, and we're gonna click on uh, manage names or multiple names. So we can see more than one. And then we can say, look, I wanna see um, Albert Crumbie's kitchen job and the family room job. I don't want the remodel job. And I want Bob Cox music uh, shop. I want the remodel job for that one. And then maybe I wanna see uh, Chris Baker's garage repair job. So I can select the specific jobs that I want under the specific customers and then click OK and then okay, and then the report is gonna be uh, filtered and only uh, show you those, okay? So that's uh, really the, the valuable piece about, uh, about using uh, the filters in a, in a profit and loss by customer report. Now, let me go into the balance sheet now, because this is a really important one, okay? So when we run a balance sheet, typically, depending on what we're trying to do, whether it's a balance sheet uh, for this fiscal year or for this month or last month, Typically, what we want to see always, it's a comparative, right? So when we go run a balance sheet, I'm going to do a last month balance sheet. So I'm going to click on last month. What I typically want to see for context is I want to see not just the value of my assets and liabilities. I want to see the net change, right? So how, how much did my assets and liabilities uh, change uh, across a time period? So we're going to click on customize report. Okay, and then we're gonna click on previous period. And typically with balance sheets, we do a uh, dollar change. So with a uh, profit and loss type of information, we do percent change. With balance sheet, we do a uh, dollar change. So when I select these two and then click okay, then all of a sudden I have a lot better context, right? I'm looking at my ending balance as of last month, but then I'm also seeing what it looked like the month before, and then I'm seeing the net change. And these net changes in the balance sheet are, are usually more telling and more valuable than uh, just what the dollar um, amount means. Okay, so that's uh, something that you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can look at a balance sheet over a period of time. So instead of using previous period, we can also use uh, by month. And then typically we'll cut this off maybe at the end of the previous year. So we do 12, 31, 2021. And then we hit OK. And then we're seeing um, a running balance uh, by month of, uh, of all the accounts. And I don't know if I may have gone way too back. I think I did. Yeah, I put 2012. So 2021 I meant to put. OK, so I'm just going back beginning of the year to the current uh, time period. And that's going to give me the running balance of the balance sheet. So I can see that go up or down depending on exactly what, uh, 
what's going on uh, with uh, with my financials. Okay, so that's that's on the balance sheet uh, side, which is similar uh, things that you can do with the profit and loss. Now I want to I want to dig into um, uh, some fun some report fundamentals, which has to do with custom reporting. So now we're done with understanding how to take the two most common standard reports and do all sorts of customization to move it around, change it around. Let's talk about building custom reports. And the idea behind spending enough time on that portion is that we get comfortable with uh, with those basics. And then once we get into the details, I may fly through some of those basics because I'm making the assumption that you understand them already. So let's uh, we're going to talk about uh, a concept called um, source versus uh target, which is a, a really, really important piece of understanding the fundamentals of custom reports, right? So we've, we've done uh, CAN reports and, and what the CAN reports uh, should look like. Let's talk about uh, some of the, uh, the, the fundamentals of, of custom reports. So let me open up the, the slides here again. And let's move on to that slide. So I want you to look at that slide and I want you to, um, to take a look at a couple of really important components. So I'm using a check as an example, but imagine this could be an invoice, this could be a bill, this could be many, many things really. So anything you see on that top, the header, is going to be the summary. Okay, and pay close attention to this. This is not basics. This is stuff that's going to come up when we do uh, custom reports. Right, so all the stuff in the top is called the source or the summary. So whenever we're looking for a report and we're focused on looking at the summary section of a report, we're looking for data that's sitting on those fields. Whenever we're looking for data that's on the destination, sometimes it may be called the detail or the split or the distribution. Unfortunately, uh, QuickBooks uses all sorts of crazy terminology to describe the same thing. All the stuff in the bottom is the destination, detail, split, line item, detail level, distribution level information. So if we're looking for a report that, that gives me the total check amount, what am I looking for? I'm looking for data from the source. If I'm looking for a report that tells me who I wrote the check to, I'm looking for data on the source. If I'm looking for a, a, a report that gives me a split of the two expense accounts that I assigned a check to, assuming it is a split, I'm looking for a report that shows me details or uh, destination level information. So let's let's discuss that. So I want to take a look at a at an invoice. Okay, so I'm going to go into uh, customers, create invoice, and then I'm going to pull up uh, any invoice here. I'm going to click back here, and I'm going to take this invoice and I'm going to look for I'm going to look at at a detail report of this invoice by itself. So to do that. We're going to hit control Y on the keyboard, control Y, and that's going to give me a transaction detail report pretty much or a transaction journal for that particular transaction. The very first line of every transaction is the header or the summary or the source. Okay, the total invoice amount, which in this case is one thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars and sixty nine cents only show up in the source of that transaction, okay? The, the details that get me there are in the details section. Every time I run a report uh, that tells me, show me both detail and um, source, it's going to give me debits and credits format, and it may be a little bit confusing. And we're going to get there, and it's going to make uh, tons of sense. So if I, were to, if I want to isolate that in this report, I would click on Customize Report. I would go into Filters. And then we're going to go into my favorite filter, which is called the detail level filter. My favorite filter, okay? Most important filter in all of QuickBooks custom report is this one. So this one says all. That means show me both debits and credits. Show me the source. Show me the destination. If I click on summary only, and that's what I'm trying to do, summary only, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm only going to get one line, okay? Because that's what I'm telling it to do. Just show me one line, the one summary from the report. Now, I don't get the detail. I don't get the items. I don't know what expense or income categories are being affected by this. All I know is the source or the accounts receivable line and, and the total dollar amount, okay? If I were to enable my account and my split columns, so I'm going to go here to split. If I were to enable my split column, 
which means uh, both accounts of the equation. Notice that I get for account, accounts receivable, very clear, that's the source. But for my split or my destination, I get the word split. And the reason for that is because I got more than one line item affecting the totality of that transaction. And more, that more than one line item is hitting or affecting multiple uh, accounts or multiple income, expense accounts, whatever they happen to be. So you're never going to get, or almost never going to get the split of a transaction on the line source to actually tell you which accounts are being affected by it if you have more than one line item associated with the transaction. Okay, <laughs> so let's do a different example and let's construct it uh, just so we understand exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna write a check to uh, this vendor here to Bayshore Cal Oil Service and this is gonna be $1,000, okay? And uh, I'm gonna send this uh, to two accounts, $800 to fuel and I'm gonna send uh, $200 to insurance, okay? Just for the sake of it, we're not uh, judging whether or not this sounds accurate or not, so we'll do that. And under the class section, we're gonna send uh, the top one to new construction and the bottom account to uh, the other class that's there. So we can have both classes being affected here. And then on the memo, I wanna put, uh, I'm gonna call it a fuel memo. And then on the insurance, I'm gonna call it insurance memo, just so we can get have a lot of clarity around what's going on here. And we're also gonna job cost it, so I'm gonna send uh, the top one to Abercrombie, uh, Abercrombie Christie, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the bottom one to uh, Allard Robert. Actually, let me use uh, another letter altogether. Let's use uh, Roche, let's use that one. So I'm gonna use just the, the customer instead of the job. So notice that I have di different information hitting different account. Um, under the check, I'm going to write here uh, check memo, just so you can see that this memo, the one on the check, is different than each of the individual line items of the memo. And then for the class of the check, in this case, I'm going to leave a blank for a second, just, just for the sake of it. And I'm also going to uh, date this check uh, a very specific date, just so I can, when I run a report, um, I can isolate this specific transaction. So I'm going to run this report on January third 2023 here that way we can isolate the transaction very easily i'm going to go ahead and click on save now i'm going to go let's start with custom reports i'm going to go to report custom reports then i'm going to click on custom transaction detail report okay and then i'm going to click on the date i'm going to go ahead and, and se select that specific date range okay which is just that date there should be only be one transaction there I'm not running any filters for now. And then I'm gonna hit on okay. And then notice that we have three transactions on that day. And the way QuickBooks works is this, these are technically three transactions, okay? These are three transactions that happen to be packaged as a single transaction, which is a check with two line items. So these are three lines affecting my accounting. We have the top line, which is my uh, checking line, which is affecting my bank account, um, which is the total dollar amount that's coming out of my bank. It's a thousand bucks. And then I have the two sub lines, right? With different memos, with different classes, with uh, different expense accounts affecting uh, the, the accounts themselves. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because the number one complaint I get from people that don't understand custom reports, is that they, they will pull a report from the bank and they won't see the expense category associated with some of the transactions they're seeing from the bank's uh, point of view. So I'm gonna show you what that means because that's the only way to show it is with an example. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a balance sheet, okay? And then I'm gonna, from the balance sheet, I'm gonna double click on my checking account so I look at all the transactions that are coming in. Now, one very important thing, when I double click on that checking account, what I'm seeing here, it's a detail report that only shows the source. And that is like the most important thing that you have to understand. Whenever you double click on a balance sheet account, what you're seeing is a source only report. So you're gonna see a whole bunch of transactions that say split, 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 this is it where people say, I, I don't understand why I can't see the account, and I'm explaining to you why. It's because I'm seeing it from the perspective 
of the bank, which is the perspective of the source, and I'm not seeing details, I'm looking only the source side of the transaction. Okay, let's take that one step further, and let's take a look at um, how uh, this whole custom reports affects our search of information. And all this stuff is gonna tie together really nicely. So I'm gonna go into the edit menu and I'm gonna click on find. And then I'm gonna click on advance. Okay, so I'm gonna do the advanced find. And then under advanced, I'm gonna go into the filters. And by the way, the advanced find filters are the same as the custom detail report filters. So there's only one thing that you have to learn, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for um, that transaction. Let me go for date here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and select that date range that I had. That's why I did that special date. That way um, they're easy to find. I'm gonna click on find. And notice that it only found the summary of the transaction. And the reason why I did that is because my detail level filter in the top, it's asking me to only show the summary. If I actually tell it to show me all, I'm gonna see the debits and the credits. I'm gonna see both of the, uh, of the line items affecting that check. I'm gonna go ahead and find one more time. So you're gonna see all three. One really important thing is when you're doing a search in QuickBooks Desktop, anytime you see something bold, this is telling you that that's the source. That's pretty much what it's telling you. That's the source, okay? So it's a little trick here. So that, that says that's the source. And if it's not bold, it says these are the destinations or the splits. If I click on all except summary and I click on find, notice that I'm not going to see the source. Now that gets a little bit trickier because uh, what happens if I start searching a specific dollar amount, right? That's really, really important. So let's say for example, that I'm gonna search for, uh, let me go back into this advanced search. I'm gonna search for a specific dollar amount. I'm gonna search for $1,000, okay? So if I'm searching for $1,000, okay? Um, and I, I, I run, I didn't run any, I, I didn't have any detail filters or summary filters. So if I search for $1,000, I'm only gonna see the source, period. There's really nothing else I can see because I'm searching for a thousand bucks. If I'm searching for $800, I'm gonna see only the one line item split from it. So when we do a search, we also run into the potential wrong impression that what we're looking at is a single transaction as a whole, and this is not it. This is one line item from the transaction. And one of the clues you should have is because this is not bold, okay? Um, if I were to do instead of a, 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 a number search, if I were to do maybe just a transaction search where I use a transaction type as my type, so I'm not using a dollar amount, I'm using the transaction type, and I do uh, checks, for example, so I'm just going to search for checks, and I click on find. I didn't limit it to a specific dollar amount, so I'm going to go ahead and get all three of those lines. And again, if I only want to see the detail portion, I'm going to use the detail level filter, and I'm going to filter it to only all except summary, which basically means don't show me uh, the source. So I'm going to show you some, some examples of using all these principles of some deep uh, reports that would be relevant. So let's talk about a couple things. So I'm gonna go to reports, I'm gonna go to custom reports, and then I'm gonna click on transaction detail. I'm also going to go to dates, I'm going to click on all, I'm going to click on filters, I'm gonna click on account, I'm gonna click on accounts receivable, okay? Right, so I'm doing everything that affects my accounts receivable. And I also, I'm also gonna go down to another filter called paid. So this is, you know, has this transaction been paid or been marked paid? I'm gonna go to paid status and I'm gonna click on open. So what I did was I ran a custom re detail report of all dates of all my accounts receivable that are still open. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So this report, and again, because I, sh I told it to give me details, right? Debits and credits, uh, summary and destination gives me all this information here, right? And this becomes really difficult uh, to understand in some cases. Um, but in a nutshell, what this report is telling me is that all of the transactions that affect accounts receivable that have not been applied, that are, that are open, um, are being displayed here. And all my debits in this case are representing invoices and all my credits are representing unapplied payments. If you take the debits and the credits, you get a balance of 62,864. So in theory, that is my accounts receivable, 
but actually it is not. So I wasn't. A, um, I'm going to get to that in a second. In theory, that would be my accounts receivable, and I'm going to explain to you, show you that it's not. So I'm going to go to my balance sheet real quick, and I'm going to go to all dates just to make sure that we're clear. Notice that that is not my accounts receivable. So that's a little bit perplexing. It's like, wait a second, you show me a report of all the detail, um, of all the details of the transactions that affect my accounts receivable that are not paid. How are these? How are these two things not uh, the same? So let me explain what I mean, okay? Because this report is showing me the totality of each transaction. It's not showing me the open balance of each transaction. So there's a hidden uh, filter or field here. I'm going to click on Customize Report. Okay, right here, Customize Report. And I'm going to, uh, where it says Columns, there's a filter called Open Balance, or a field, rather. It's a field called Open Balance. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'll do is I don't, I don't need debits or credits. I'm just going to get rid of these things by just kind of collapsing them into themselves because this information is just confusing. So that is actually a much better report because this report actually tells me all the transactions that have an open status that haven't been paid. Uh, in, and this is all in uh, source level, actually. So the source level of transactions because they affect accounts receivable. And, um, and how we got to the $49,000. So that's actually, that's a really neat report. Now I can take it one step further and do a total buy and then do it by customer. So now all of a sudden I have a detailed report grouped by customer of all my transactions that are still open that affect my accounts receivable and are only showing the open balances. Now, in some cases, you may want to show the original transaction amount and the open balance next to it. If that's the case, we can uh, enable the amount column, okay? So we enable the amount field and also the open balance field, so we're enabling it. So now, by contrast, we can see that uh, some of these transactions, let's say we find one that's different dollar amount. This is a good, good, good example here. So notice that we have uh, the original amount of this invoice is 3100 but the open balance is uh, 700. So that gives you some context, right? Which is why um, when you scroll the way up, you're gonna see that that bogus $62,000 that really didn't mean anything. Uh, you're gonna see them show up in there because that was the totality of the open transactions and this is the to totality of the open balance from the open transactions. So that's actually a really um, important point. Now I'm gonna take it one step further and show you something else that a lot of people don't know about this report. I'm going to go and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go to reports and custom report, custom transaction detail reports. I'm kind of just following the same path. And then I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to do uh, this fiscal year to date. Okay. I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to, I'm going to do transaction type. I'm going to do invoices. I'm only going to show invoices in this case, only invoices. And then I'm going to go to page status and I'm going to show open. So right now uh, I'm showing all of my invoices that are open. Now these, in this case, because I picked the transaction type and not the account being affected, I'm actually seeing debits and credits, debits and credits. So that's all, all that stuff is happening at the moment. I'm seeing debits and credits. That's confusing. Okay. So I'm going to run, use the same principles that we've been learning. And then we're going to run um, the detail level report and only show the summary. So starting to um, so starting to to track that. So I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna go to um, detail level. Again running the same filters that we'll be talking about and then I'm gonna do summary only and then I'm gonna hit okay. So okay so now this tells me all of the invoices that uh, that are open that are dated between January 1st and December 15. Right these are unpaid and uh, the total dollar amount of those, it's 111,000. So just pay attention to that number uh, for a second, okay? And, um, and there was a question coming in saying, hey, why would you, uh, why would you uh, put a class on, on an invoice? So let me open that real quick. I don't wanna go on a tangent, but in, in QuickBooks, you can put a class up here in the top uh, next to the customer's name, or you can put a class in the individual line items of an invoice. So when you run a report, if you're, again, if you're pulling up details, then what you're concerned about is, and I'm gonna enable that because it's actually um, not enabled in this, in this 
template. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on classes in the template itself to show you uh, what I mean. And this is all gonna come together and it should start making more sense. So right now, notice that every single line item, these are the detail or the split, what we've been talking about before, these are all hitting the remodel class. So every component of this invoice is affecting my remodel class. So all of the totality of this invoice, $14,000, if I look at this in a profit and loss report, those $14,000 go into a remodel class. But if I look at a receivables report, or an invoice report, or a report that shows only the source of the transaction, and I choose an entirely different class, which is possible, um, then depending on which report I'm looking at, I'm going to see a different class. So, um, so use that, if you look at that example, this transaction uh, called uh, Alert Robert, you see right here, invoice 1058, that one's hitting my new construction class. But if I had my details uh, enabled, Right? I'm gonna show you uh, so you can see it. So take a look at invoice 1058. I'm gonna show my details only, not the summary. Notice that my details are hitting my remodel class because those were the classes in the individual line items. So I, that was a question that came from the crowd and, and, if, and that was great that you asked it because that's exactly what I wanted to get to. So you understand the difference between source and uh, destination. That's really, really um, important. Okay, so the other uh, piece I wanted to show you with this, and this is an advanced feature of the reports, and most folks <clears throat> forget about this piece, is we told uh, th the custom reports, we told them that we want only open invoices. Okay, only open invoices. Now, these open invoices are right now based on their current status as per the database. What I mean by that. If I receive this, so I'm going to go ahead and receive the payment. I'm going to go ahead and receive the payment for that 14500 just to show you. So let me, um, I'm going to leave this report up. I'm going to go to customers. I'm going to go into uh, receive payment. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and receive a payment for Allard Robert. Okay. I'm going to receive uh, 14000 Let's do it. 14500 and I'm going to receive it as of uh, December 15, 2022, which is the last date of this invoice. If I click on save in this one, like I so said, if I save uh, this transaction, okay, what I'm expecting it to happen is I'm expecting that to drop off the report. So I'm expecting as soon as this saves, let me hit save, uh, save and close here. I'm expecting that to drop off the report. Okay, that's what I'm expecting it to happen because I received the payment. This is an open invoice report. Now, something that's really interesting is, what if I receive that payment in the future? So notice that I'm gonna, I'm gonna future date it to the 16th, right? That's one date into the future because this report is stuck on the 15th and I'm gonna save it, okay? In this report, it still shows the invoice dropped off because we asked for the paid status as of the current state, as per the database, regardless of the date. But there's one specific feature, and trust me, this is valuable, this is gold here. Once you cl click on Customize Report, and you're gonna click on Advance, we're gonna click on Open Balance Aging, right? Not current, right? Not the entire totality of the database, we're actually gonna choose Report Date. So this is gonna recalculate accounts receivable up to the date of the report. So then this this invoice comes back up because it's still open as of that date. And using that same example, if I go back to this invoice and I backdate this, right, and I, I put it within the range of the report and then hit, hit and close, notice, you know, take, take a look at that number, that's gonna drop off again. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of that specific feature, which again is customized report, advanced, and is as of the report date. Um, and then we hit uh, okay, and that will do that.